All right, this is Awkward Occurrence with Awkward Entertainment. So we're going to be getting into some Harley Hunt. Did I say her name right? Who's Harley Hunt? We're going to be getting into some Harley Hunt. I believe that is her last name. That is her mother's last name, Miss Hunt. And she released a video about biblical or moving on. That's mainly the theme of her channel is moving on and biblical and new beginnings. But this one particular video, um, I just didn't. Let's not say I didn't. Let's just point out the fact she talks with a high pitch and she seems to be rambling on and on into a script. You know, I understand people think of a message they're going to say before they turn on the camera, but this is one long message she's saying, and she's rambling on and rambling and really just not saying anything at all. She's just not saying anything at all. You know, her emotions say, well, I'm so excited. Her emotions say, well, nothing never happened. Like, when I say nothing never happened, she asked, like, there was never a crime committed. But she asked, like, her mom didn't murder an 11 year old. Which I'm all for Letitia Stouch in a sense. I don't believe at all Letitia Stouch murdered Gannon Stouch. I don't believe it at all. There's no evidence. But let's continue. Let's continue into Holly Hunt. Miss Holly Hunt and her odd on camera demeanor. Just like Letitia Stouch, odd on camera court courtroom, jail cell room demeanor this past Friday. All right, let's get into Holly Hunt's video. This is her biblical message video. If my lie detector, if I'm lying, am I lying if my lie detector is fake? Am I lying if my lie detector is fake? Y'all know where I get that reference from. Ma'am, please stop and watch this video. Ever since I was a little girl, I was raised up in the church. So I knew who God was. I believed in him. I believed that he died on the cross for our sins. But I just never grew that close relationship with him. So I never got to feel all of God's love for me. And when I was 12 years old, my father passed away. And this was one of the hardest times in my life. I faced so much depression and anxiety and suffering. And I just thought that I had to hold in all my feelings and emotions. So I never got help with it. I thought that I had to show the world that I was strong and that I was of course, we, we can hear the fast talking, the, the fast talking, the fast talking. I thought I would have a joke for this part. <laughs> Let me try to imitate this girl voice. You know, I found Jesus Christ at the latter day. You know, let me continue the video. going to be okay, even though I wasn't. During those times, I completely lost myself, and I just started finding hope and happiness in so many of the wrong places, whether it was boys, and always thinking that I had to be in a relationship and lust just to fulfill that missing piece of my father that I never got to have. And, you know, this really broke me. My Biblical Testimony Part 2 and I remember the thing that hurt me the most is the fact that my last words to my father was that I hate you and to never talk to me again because we had gotten an argument shortly before then. Okay, it's going to take a second before we get into the Alicia Tisha Tisha Tosh part where she talk about Gannon Stouch. And she goes on just to say a few words about Gannon and Letitia. Let's get back into this video. And I just didn't think ever that those would be my last words. And shortly after then, me and my family, we had found out that we're moving across the country all the way to Alaska. And I was so nervous. I was so scared. I had my pack. Remember the last story, the last story about Letitia Stouch and um, one of the dudes on her husband's base was flirting with her or trying to get with her. And there was this big falling out. The dude admitted he was trying to get with her or flirted with her or made a pass at her in Alaska. 
That would be the made it past that Leticia. God is bringing you to a place of isolation so that you can build your relationship with him and you can become closer to him without any distractions. And I remember in that moment, I just fell to the floor and I felt so much happiness and hope again and that everything that was going to be okay. And I was just filled with joy and overwhelm. I didn't know what to say, I didn't know what to do. I was just pouring out, crying. To My biblical testimony, part three. Okay, so part three. To Alaska, I tried to keep positivity and help, but we were literally in the middle of nowhere. I had no friends, nothing to do. I hid it there. My family hid it there. It just brought us all down. Finally, we were able just to move to Colorado. That brought us like some normalcy, and it just made us feel like we were family again. Everything felt so good and felt so right. I had met amazing friends. I had met an amazing guy. Um, you know, life just felt so good again. I had not felt that happy in forever. And a year later, after we had moved there, one of the biggest tragedies of my life and just anything that I'll ever experience happened. My biblical testimony, part four. You haven't put that entire situation into words yet. You see how she looks in the sky to try to think of what to say. You know, her mood switches from... She tries to switch it from happy to, I guess, a little somber or sad. But after all this time, you haven't put that entire situation into words. You gotta look in the sky to think about it. I don't want to hear, oh, it was such a terrible moment. Maybe she doesn't think about it. Whatever. 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 That's exactly what happened to me. I wanted to stay like it was yesterday. My brother had gone missing. We had no idea where he was, where he went, what happened. Um, shortly after, a couple months later, we found out that he had passed away. Shortly after that, my mom... So I remember this day just like it was yesterday. Um, it was January 27th. My brother was reported missing. Um, they say he came home and left and just never came home. Then, like months later in February, you know, they accused my mother of murdering my stepbrother and that's when my whole world just took a took a turn for the worse. Just this mentally, physically drained me. This took a turn for the worse, you know. Then after my mother was arrested, a few weeks after that, Gannon's body turns up in Florida. And he's been murdered, stabbed, shot, and hit with blunt blunt force object. Mom, I really, you know, I really don't know what to say. And they pin it on my mother, you know. So I want to root for my mother. I want to root for my mother, but I really don't know what to say. You know, the trial hasn't came out yet, so I really can't say, hey, you know, I was at home. I saw my mom cleaning blood or I can't. You know, I really can't say nothing on YouTube about the case. You know, I could smile and talk about that day and that event with no real emotion. And let's continue this video out. Was arrested. I have no communication with my stepdad or my little sister and any of my family. And I had lost everything. I lost my family, my home, my belongings, my car, my job, everything. And I just had to start over by myself at 17. I didn't know where I was going to go. I didn't, I wasn't prepared for this. I wasn't planned for this. And I just had to figure out my way through life. And there were so many times where I just sat there and I cried out to God, like, why me? Why would you put me through this again? Um, why would God put you through... Let me finish this up right quick. I'm going to keep you too long. So she had to figure out her whole life again. Um, Al kicked Letitia out or Letitia left. They ended up going to South Carolina. I don't know where Harley gets the money to fund anything she does. I don't know where she gets the money. She claimed she had to start all over. Well, when she started all over, 
She started all over with a bag of money, it seems like. Let's continue. What did she say after starting all over? Um, why did God put her through that? Well, God doesn't cause people to murder. God doesn't cause those situations. So, I think it's, um, I think it's, that's backwards preaching. That's very backwards preaching. Like, that's when a preacher don't know what they're talking about. You know, when they say God put you through this, well, no, there's free will. Everybody has free will, so... I guess God can take something horrible that God didn't cause and bring good out of it, you know. Some people might come closer to God after a terrible situation, but God didn't cause the situation. So let's continue to listen to this preacher in training. Really, I don't know what the heck she is, but let's continue. Why would she put me through another tragedy like this again, God? I don't understand. My Biblical Testimony Part 5 I remember wanting to believe that this all was just a dream and that it wasn't real and I'm just like hardly wake up, somebody pinch me, somebody Yeah, they say that a lot on TV um, when certain events happen at schools, as kids get on TV and say it felt so surreal um, felt like it's not real, it felt like it was a dream you go back to those shootings on on TV, you'll see the students say exactly the same thing. But I guess it's so surreal because it's, it's like you only see it on TV. It like, it's like it only happened on TV. Let's continue with Miss Harley Hunt testimony. It hit me, but it was reality. It was all over news headlines. It was broadcasted all over the world. I was facing cyberbullying, and I didn't know what to do. I didn't get help. I Let's continue. I didn't ask for help. I didn't go to therapy or anything like that. I just took all the evil things of this world, and I just thought that it would bring me happiness, but it only brought me happiness in that moment. I would still wake up, and I was still facing that same problem. I mean, there's actually no such thing as cyberbullying. When you could just turn off the computer, <laughs> when people voice their opinions, <laughs> it's really no such thing. It's really no such thing. But let's continue. We're not kids in school. This isn't um, cyberbullying elementary school. Let's continue. And I was just filled with so much sorrow and sadness, and I just remember sitting in the what a grown adult would call cyberbullying. You, how old are you, you old lady, old man? Cyberbullying. We aren't kids. We aren't kids. We're having a conversation here. Whether it be an argument or a disagreement or not, we're having a conversation. You can't just pull the cyberbullying card because you don't like the conversation. Let's continue. And looking at myself and having no idea who it was because I was so far from God. And I just remember God persevering. And he was talking to me and he was telling me, Harley, you have a purpose. And I'm going to bring you through this struggle and that you're going to be okay. Just believe in me and bring all your sorrows and burdens to me at my feet and lay them down to me. My Biblical Testimony Part 6. Uh. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, God, I hear you. I'm listening to you, dear God. But how am I supposed to pay my bills? How am I supposed to be happy again? How am I supposed to move forward? How am I supposed to do better for myself? How am I not supposed to let this story stop me from doing all the amazing things and the things that you have planned for me? But I think the biggest things as Christians where we go wrong is that... And then let's con- just get one thing right. The biggest thing as Christian, what God had, what God has planned for you, is for you to serve God and be God's servant and preach the word of God. I mean, you working and all that stuff on the side is just sad stuff. That's just sad stuff. But what God purpose has for you is to serve God, preach the word of God, bring more people to God. Uh, keep more people out of H E L L out of that lake of fire. Get their name written in the book of life. Um, the the money that's just bonus. That's just bonus. God's strong favor is just bonus. That's not the main objective. That's just bonus. Anybody, who, you got a bunch of atheists who go to work and pay bills and don't believe in God. So I don't. 
I, I know for sure God's will for you isn't for you to go to work and just pay bills. That's really not God's will for you or will for his children or the ones that are saved in God. That's not God's will. I mean, God's not here to be um, a tree where money falls off of any time you need. I guess that's what jobs are for, but God does provide. But that's not God's purpose. That's not of the Word of God, of the Bible. That's not, just, just not God's purpose. But that that is bonus. That's how I put it. That's a bonus. That's that's a plus. But let's continue. We have little faith. We have little faith. But in short, God's purpose, God's will, serve God. Help other people to Jesus Christ. Let's continue. God, we don't have any trust in Him and all the things that He can do. We have no certainty, but when we have certainty in God and we trust in Him, that is when He starts moving things in our life, and that is when all those. Okay, I'm just gonna end it here. I'm just gonna end it with that. Like, uh, okay, okay. So we get the point, Miss Holly Hunt. We get the point. You know, thank you, for, thank you for your time sitting in front of the camera and going over your lines with us. Thank you for going over your lines. All right. Let's get to your mom, Letitia. Again, am I lying if my lie detector is fake? Miss Letitia Stouch. <laughs> um, before I end this out, this is just a snippet, a snapshot of Letitia. Well, she was in her cell. She was just in her cell. Going in circles, walking in circles, spinning. I guess she was just being bored, being bored, being bored. It was just silly, looking up at the ceiling. Don't know what she was looking for. I don't see the point of putting her on camera. Didn't see it. You couldn't sit at a table and put a camera there. Like, whatever. Not that big of a deal. Let's get to this trial. Let's get to this trial so she can be found not guilty because they don't have anything on her to suggest she murdered Gannon. Just nothing. Nothing from what I'm seeing. There's nothing in the affidavit they have on her that says she murdered Gannon. All right. This has been an awkward occurrence. I don't know I'm going to get some slack about Miss Harley Hunt. Me, um, joking on Harley Hunt. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Yeah, all right. All right. We all know the Bible. Let's, let me get up out of here. We know the Bible. All right. This is the Awkward Occurrence or Awkward Entertainment. And I will see you in the next video. Is it that has you so angry? Is it the, the attackers? It's the is attackers, it? but it's also the attacks. It's like, you know, at first it was a thing of like, listen, if I tell the truth, then that's it, because it's the truth. Mm -hmm. Then it became a thing of like, oh, how can you doubt that? Like, how do you, how do you not believe that? It's the truth. And then it became a thing of like, oh, it's not necessarily that you don't believe that this is the truth. You don't even want to see that this is the truth.